Good evening, Lucas. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> nice to see you again. It's late in Chengdu. <laughs> it's not so late in Denmark. It's okay. I know. So well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us again the, on behalf of the Athletes Commission and all of the athletes around the world. We really appreciate you putting your time aside to be able to speak to us. It's a pleasure for me at any time for the athletes. Thank you. I just wanted to explain a little bit of an introduction in reference to this, this new idea that we've done with uh, Skyping the press. Uh, to explain a little bit about why last time the, the picture was slightly different than maybe yeah. what was expected from a, a Skype meeting. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> so last time what actually happened was we ended up doing a Skype meeting, but we were across from each other to actually figure out whether the Skype meeting from long distance would work. Yes. So of course the whole communications team, they were behind it and trying to figure out how everything could be done on a, if we were able to do it long distance. And this, we were very lucky that everything worked the way it was. But from last interview, sometimes it seemed a little bit weird from us, Lucas, that we were looking at each other and then looking at the screen and then looking at each other again. Exactly. But this time, I guess I can tell everyone that now I'm in Denmark and Lucas is over in China just before the World Championships Latin. So uh, let's see if it works 100%. Yes. I <laughs> promised it to my little son, Simon, who is a great follower of you, that this time it will be a real Skype conference call. Out of question, oh, because he will watch us. He said we have a lot of followers, but we have to do it right. This time we do it right. It's after midnight and we Skype. You're in Denmark. OK, good. Let, good. let us proceed. So Lucas, now I would like to ask you the first question that I sent you, which is in reference to how far we are in collecting the information that was necessary for the, the match fixing task force, which you've started some months ago, uh, being able yes. to get that developed and improved and, and how far we actually are within the stages with this. Yes. Okay, Ashley, we had our first meeting on 13th, 14th of August 2016 in Stuttgart. And the task force consists of myself, of Harry Sivalsami. He is a renowned expert on integrity in sport, Daniel Stelin. He is an expert on the legal instruments available within WDSF, expert on investigative procedures and Swiss panel law. And by the way, he is a public prosecutor in my country of Switzerland. Then I invited Miss Auli Korhonen. She's the task force secretary, Mr. Sean Tay, our general secretary, and Roland Hilficker, our WDSF communication director for all aspects of communications. And you know how important communication in those days are when you touch such a sensible issue. Uh, the task force output so far, we have uh, our minutes from the Stuttgart meeting of the 14th of August, but of course there are internal minutes. It was a very successful short meeting. And then out of that meeting we have established the so-called non-paper. It's a discussion paper. It will be not published to the public. And that we have finalized by the end of August, 28th of August. This all will lead to a so-called white paper. And that paper will be made public by 15th of October and on our website and to the whole Dancebord community. What we have also done is we have uh, collected a lot of materials and we have made references and we have made a little library about all this uh, material and this also uh, we have found out is very interesting. It's material from the IOC, from the European community and we will make this available on our website uh, at the same moment when we will publish the white paper on 15th of October. And we have spoken on the WDSF's main website. Yes, on our website, exactly. It will be uh, uh, it will be announced, and then everybody has the chance to go to have a look at this paper to consult it. How how far he wants to go? That's out of question. And now let's take about the white paper and the definition of competition manipulation. The definition of what constitutes competition manipulation in dance sport is consistent with the general accepted definitions. We have found out that there are definitions by the European Union and by the uh, IOC and it's the same. Commonly, when you talk about competition manipulation, you talk about betting. We have legal or illegal betting on the outcome of dance sport competitions. 
The European Union and the IOC have installed a global betting monitoring system and the service is provided by Interpol and we have started the research. We have found out Dancebot is out of the radar but still investigated. However, Dancebot specific manipulation has financial implications too. Let's talk about it. Dancebot specific manipulation is brought about by a conflict of interest. A majority of judges work as trainer, as teacher and as coaches. And that is, that is not new at all. The origins and the status quo tell us that it has been part of the culture since the 1920s. We both were not born at that time, of course. Teachers define the rules and the game and also become its expert judges. Hence, we must shift paradigms. Dance sport has been an industry much before it became a sport. For example, it remains an industry. It cannot be both. It's a sport. It needs a regulatory framework. All stakeholders must recognize the value of rules and sanctions. This for me is a normal process when we call us a sport. WDSF therefore must enforce its codes, must also take sanctions if we have a breach of, con of the codes and each breach must be sanctioned whenever we find it out. What else is needed? Sorry. Sorry? Sorry, continue. I'll ask the question. Oh, of course, <laughs> no problem. Then we have the education and the improvement. We have to educate judges, improve the judging procedures, monitor results systemat systematically in order to have a credible sport. Then sport requires fair judging. Yes. And when we speak about fair judging, what does this mean? Have a stricter control over judges' certification? competition monitoring and certification, then review and implement precise definition of criteria for judging. The third item I would uh, raise is continue to develop new judging systems, assessing them regularly and improve the training, the education above all of the system for the judges. Yeah. And finally, most important and important value in all these processes is to communicate in the most comprehensive manner about every single point mentioned above. Yeah. Finally, let's go back to the definition. The definition, manipulation of sport competitions means an intentional arrangement, act or omission aimed at an improper alteration of the result of the course of a sports competition in order to remove all or part of the unpredictable nature of the aforementioned sports competition with a view to obtaining an undue advantage for oneself for the others. It does exist in dance sport, out of question. Whether it's widespread or not is not the issue. One single case would justify that measures are taken against it. The task force develops such measures and gets them ready for implementation in the shortest time possible. And when I speak about shortest time, actually, it's a complicated matter. Don't expect from me that it's happened overnight or over months. No. It is an ongoing process. It takes time to change a culture. And we all are aware of this, but if we do not start now, we will never start. So we start this process. The three members... Look at them. Yeah? Sorry? Sorry there was, it was just a couple of things in reference to two of the points which you mentioned. So the, the first point where you mentioned in reference to something that we've had a long time standing through, of course, our dance sport, since dancing from back the 1920s. Yeah in reference to the conflict of interest, where we have both adjudicators and we have teachers on the same side. So in some way, sometimes there can end up being a conflict of interest. Do yeah. we see that in the future that somehow this will start to be divided? Or are we just acknowledging that this is the way it is and we have to try and a solve it by being- Ashley, that's the, that's the question I expected from you. And <laughs> at the moment, I will not and cannot give you the answer, but I'm open-minded. We have everything on the table and we must analyze it and see where does it lead us. 
when at the end of the day this is the only solution in order to have a proper sport? Yes, why not? But we have to yeah. analyze this systematically and find out what is the proper way for our sport in future. But and every single be included. We will not have blind, uh, we will not uh, um, look away, we will touch every single issue uh, in that matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, therefore, the, the, I, I, sorry. Sorry. The, the, uh, oh, I wanted to ask. I'm going to ask a question in reference to now the we had it up on the last athletes commission meeting in reference to the new, um, oh, what's it called? Motion that was passed at the AGM this year in reference to now all national member federations are able to approve WDSF adjudicators with that system if there's something new on that. Because I thought that this, or is that off the subject? Is um, that difficult for you to answer? At the moment it's difficult because as simple as this is or uh, as simple as it looks, it is not. In reality, we have need a deeper thought about that because uh, the IOC requests from us a real clear system with a clear education plan and we have to see how we can accommodate all the interests of our member bodies and of course also in view of being an Olympic sport. So uh, at the moment I cannot say more that it's just not so easy like the motion which has been approved and we will not walk there into uh, an area which um, we uh, yeah. cannot see the result at, at the end. So this is still uh, ongoing. Can I, can I ask the question and then can you, because there are a lot of people who ask me about this question. Uh, can I ask the question and then you can say that together with the General Secretary uh, your or the Presidium or you can say the Managing Board, I'm not sure which di department yeah. is making exactly the say that you're already in discussion in reference to this because you need to make sure that all member federations are are met and under the IOC because then we have an answer that at least you've give, given an answer that you're working on it. We are in discussion in the managing committee not yet on the presidium level because we want to have much more guidance at the moment but we, we, yeah. uh, we have the task from the general meeting our highest organ but let's see now how we can break that down and make it happen to all the parts of our world. Unfortunately, not all our parts of the world look the same, have the same standard, yeah. same development, and we have to find a very balanced solution in this problem. And uh, okay. I think Sean is working very hard on that. Yeah? Okay, I'll ask the question now. Yeah? Yeah, but... Um, Finally, for finalizing the competition manipulation, um, the three uh, member task force will call on the help on all stakeholders in dance sport to make it achievable. So everybody who can give us input or help us is welcome because we really want to take that uh, matter further on and to proceed that process. Yes. So and no. I hope I could express myself clear enough where are we. It's not something that you can expect results in, in such short time, but I'm quite impressed where we are, what we have found out, that we are not alone in this problem, that there is a lot done in the European Union, in the IOC, uh, um, and that we can benefit out of this. We, do, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we have to be very consequent and precise how we implement this into the end sport and how we change the culture at the end of the day. It's a question of the culture in dance sport. And this is my goal for my presidency, to change or to start change this culture. I don't know whether we are both are still in office when the, the change of the culture has been happened, but we are part of it and we can be proud of it. I cannot say more. I'm just proud to be at the beginning of the process. Ask me at the end, Ashley. <laughs> But not in 100 years, huh? <laughs> do we have do we have any type of of time table or something like this where we can start to expect that that very clear steps will start to be made? Do you have any any idea like to? Of course, I understand you can never guarantee. No. But do you have something to say? Okay, we hope by the beginning of January, or we hope by the summer of next year, that we will have clear principles in place to be able to now move in and make clear decisions. Yes, I think you all will better understand when you read first the white paper in the mid of October, as announced, published on our website, and then I hope that until the next AGM uh, we can give a further report, see where we are and give a much more concrete result because we have again election next year and I want that our delegates knows what they elect, that I will ongo 
that the, the process will be an ongoing one and that with their vote they support me in that um, difficult task force and difficult matter and that is one uh, important uh, achievement of my first year as president. I want to have that commitment from our member federation or at least ask them if they support it. I mean, I don't know the result, but I'm confident that I get a majority behind this intention. Yeah. Okay, well, I will move on to the second question which I had. And uh, the second question, I guess, is, is kind of similar to the first one, but in a slightly different way. Um, there was an incident at the German Open Championships yeah. this year in reference to one adjudicator which was taken off one of the panels um, under, I guess you could say, the same name, which is uh, against match fixing, where there was at least, it seemed to be at the time that there was proof that there was match fixing going on, and therefore he was removed from the panels. Uh, from the athlete side, we would like to hear what has happened, what is the situation now? what is going to happen and how can we prevent these different things in the future. Okay, well understood. Whether it was competition manipulation or not is still subject to an ongoing investigation. What was proven beyond any doubt whatsoever so over, and even admitted by the judge in question was a breach of the code of conduct on his part. During a competition new standard in, in Stuttgart the judge, rather than watching the couples on the floor, and this is his only assignment in Stuttgart, he has to do the job, to judge the couples, he looked repeatedly at an Apple Watch. As he did, he was recorded on video by a third party. That's fact. The Presidium resolved to impose a provisional sanction by suspending the judge for a period of six months. During this period, the investigation of the case will continue and may lead to other charges beyond the breach of code of conduct or not. All, at all times, due process is guaranteed and the investigated judge is assumed innocent. It is important that I will state that here publicly. The case was and is investigated by our legal commission and the sports commission. With the task force having been officially installed in Stuttgart, it logically assumed an important advisory role in dealing with the investigation and the provisional sanctioning. In doing so, it pointed out a number of key aspects that will need to be considered in the future, when WDSF is forced to deal with alleged competition manipulation in other cases. The task force discovered that our current practices will need to be reviewed in a serious allegation as its competition manipulation. It is of importance to establish a firm timeline for the investigative process as well as for the sanctioning, including provisional measures that are based on the recently, it was in Rome, approved internal dispute resolution code. Both need equal consideration the integrity of sport and, of course, the reputation of a person who is suspected of having committed competition manipulation. This has implications in virtually all areas of dealing with such a case. The task force has, based on the experience that it made with the Stuttgart case, come up with concrete proposals already. And I don't know whether you had time to go on our website and follow up the yeah. result. Um, uh, what we have done is, first time in history, we have ranked uh, under the EU standard, in standard, uh, under the results, uh, a paragraph under investigation. So we highlighted it, that this competition, uh, the result is under investigation. You can go and click and have a look there. And, uh, how we did it and then also we made the, the remark about the results that these results are part of an ongoing investigation and under review until further notice. They are posted there with the caveat that they may need to be amended once the investigation has concluded at which point the under investigation flag will be removed. But now we are prepared, you know, we have a flag, we can put that flag on under investigation and once the final, the case is closed, that flag will be removed. 
Um, it was not so easy to do this, but I'm proud that we have it. We have it for further cases and just between two of us, of course, a lot of people see it. I think all the judges are advised to do their job. That's the message I want yeah. to give right now here. Then we can avoid all this because it's the last thing WDSF likes or I like to do to, to, to sanction educators. But if it's necessary, we will do it and we will do it again. Yes. I think this is, uh, yeah, it's a, a difficult situation, of course, for both the adjudicators to be in, but also in reference to our sport, of course, to have these situations. But I think the only way of moving forward, yeah. and, and we've spoken about this often on the meetings, is that you are held accountable for your actions. And if you're held accountable for your actions, hopefully it will also show other people that that it's not okay to yeah. to not take your job seriously. It's important to take your job seriously and for all of us dancers who are standing in front of the mirror for hours and hours and hours a day, it's yeah. so important that when we go out and we're judged that we're judged on fair ground. But we're not judged because of any other any other parameters. Yeah. It has to be only and fairly on the dance. But can I ask you now, do you have the feeling that the athletes, they feel now the difference that we are serious about this matter, that we uh, try to want to do whatever we can by just what I explained? And do, do you have already heard or felt the difference? For me, it's important. I don't expect it overnight, but it would be nice if one day I get the feedback that really the athletes uh, uh, give you the, the, such kind of feedbacks about uh, that difficult work. For, for sure, we got feedback straight away after the one adjudicator was yeah. taken off that it, it was fantastic that it was reacted upon so clearly and so quickly that taken off the panel straight away and that a new judge was assigned and put onto the panel straight away so that it didn't continue. Um, but at the same time, then everybody now is very curious to see what will happen. Will WDSF actually follow through with what happened or will it just fall to the side and, and you know, somebody gets a slap on the wrist? So I, I think, yes, I think everybody was very happy with how it was dealt with at the time. And everybody's very interested in seeing what will actually happen now. Yeah. Will it be followed through on or, or will it fade out, I guess? WDSF right. will <laughs> not fall aside as long as we all are determined and we want really to progress in this matter. I promise you the first option is the only option for me. Falling aside is never a yeah. good option, Ashley. No, <laughs> no we will not do it. <laughs> <laughs> big major questions so until next time I'll find some more for you which, which <laughs> keep coming in on the email <laughs> I don't expect Today. easy questions thank you, <laughs> thank you Ashley <laughs> uh, enjoy your spaghetti hopefully cooked by your lovely husband I have to go thank to bed you. sleep to be ready for tomorrow's world championship in Latin in Chengdu and um, yes. I'm really looking forward to that event and hopefully to a beautiful competition on the floor that the best couple will win tomorrow. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Lucas. Thank you. Thanks for now. Bye-bye, Ashley. Bye. <laughs>